hello everyone and welcome to the channel where today i am doing a very short tutorial on the best weapons in the game weapons and armor in the game and how you can obtain them so i played about 500 hours of the game and about nine saves i have compiled a few maps as well of uh, the places where you can get the particular items i mean it's not the same always but uh over my nine playthroughs um I've compiled a map of where you can find most of them. Uh, made a map with marking the territories, so you can find that in the comment description as well as in the video itself. So without any dilly dally, let's quickly start. So the first thing we're going to be talking about are swords. The best swords in the game are. Uh, let's talk about one-handed first. The one-handed best sword in the game is Samaskin Steel Spather. Um, unfortunately you will not be able to buy this but fortunately there is an even cheaper and easier way to get this you just need to uh, marry a noble woman of the imperial heritage i have found so i married the queen's daughter era she already had the sword equipped so i just took it from her uh, i think this is the best sword i have not yet found another alternative it just looks good as well the stats is what you are here for the trust damage is 51 whereas the swing damage is 75 it is not the best swing damage but the swing speed weight and the thrust speed all balance it down uh, handling is 89 okay now on to the two-handed swords the best two-handed sword that i have found obviously is going to be the Tamaskin steel two handler but the problem here in lies is you are not able to obtain this sword in the game uh in all of my playthroughs i married countless women, uh, noble women i was not able to get this two-handed sword i do not know if you are a female character playing it you can obtain it from a male character maybe but uh i was not able to obtain it you cannot buy it in any of the shops as far as i know uh, i could have been changed in the newer updates but i have found an alternative for this Damascan steel sword i have found an alternative which is the falk sword it is actually very simple to find i will put a map up here where you can find it in this playthrough i found it in the sturgeon territory it is really good against shields you cannot find it like everywhere there's only like three places that i found that had this thing so and this one compared to the Tamaskin steel two-hander it does only two less damage but every other stats on this as you can see on the screen are actually better so moving on now we are going into the pole arm section the best pole arm that i have found in the game is this a rum rum failure or something i do not know how to say it but the problem here in lies similar to that one with the Tamaskin steel spathia you cannot obtain it uh without using cheat menu uh, that's the problem uh, and again i've also found alternatives to it my best alternative that i have found is going to be war razor or the sledgehammer uh, i would suggest you use the war razor instead of the sledgehammer the sledgehammer obviously does better damage then um, it does not do better damage but it's got mostly all of the stats better than the other one um, and the other one cannot do uh, thrust damage whereas this one can the wall razor is in my opinion the best out of all three uh wall razor is what razor just does 41 ps damage length is 205 it only does 155 damage as compared to the 169 of the Amphelia. but it is actually better than that of the sledgehammer it's fairly decent it's kind of heavy uh, but i think this is the best alternative it is actually far cheaper than the other pole arms or most of the weapons that i'm going to show you uh the pricing um i do not know if it is always the same but two times i bought it i was able to buy it for sixty thousand. but sometimes it might actually sew up with thirty two thousand as well it also depends on your trade skill so next we are going to talk about a spear this spear is actually fairly easy to obtain in the game it is the thin thin it's a thin fine spear hewing spear 
Team Fine Steel Healing Sphere. Um, it's actually a tier 5 weapon as opposed to the other tier 6 weapons that we have on the list here. Uh, but it is actually far cheaper than the other ones. You can only uh, you can get this for like 20,000 18 to 20,000 um, In most of the areas of the map. Uh, I will put a map up here in the screen. You can check it out All right It does 87 thrust uh, it has 87 thrust speed and 38 piercing damage Which is actually not good as compared to the other pole arms that I have shown war raise is far better so I would uh, myself prefer the other pole arms like the pole axis and others instead of the spear but uh, if you're looking for a spear this is the spear for you it starts as shown in the screen as well so now moving on next we are going to move on into the ranged weapons the best ranged bow bow is always ranged the best bow in the game as i have found is the noble bow uh but the catch is it requires bow of 70 levels in bow skills 70 skill points in bow i guess uh this is actually kind of expensive you can actually get it for thirty-eight thousand. i'll put the map up here in the screen um and uh, the arrows that will, will complement it are the piercing arrows these are fairly expensive arrows as well these are arrow tier 5 the weapon itself the bow is tier 6 it's got 94 speed 80 piercing damage 98 accuracy and 60 and 90 percent missile speed and the piercing arrows are 100% accuracy and have 4 piercing damage and can stack up to 23 as usual. So now that's bow covered. Now let's talk about the crossbow. The best crossbow in the game is the bound crossbow. It also requires crossbow 70 similar to that of the bow. It's a tier 6 weapon. Speed is 63, damage is 100, piercing damage, accuracy is 100, missile speed is 97 and ammo limit is 1 and uh, obviously there are no special bolts in the game so the level one bolt a weapon tier one bolt is gonna have to do for it uh, i'm not gonna say much it is not expensive the bound crossbow is actually fairly expensive than the noble crossbow the bound crossbow cost me around one hundred and fifty thousand to get all right anyway now moving on to the javelin the best javelin in the game is going to be zerid it is actually fairly common i would say late game not early on it is actually expensive as well fairly expensive uh it this one cost me ninety thousand, i think uh but you can see on the screen it's a sixty two thousand current area that i am in but uh, it cost me ninety thousand. i'll put a map in the screen so you can see where you can get it it does 121 piercing damage it's got 113 lens so you can fight off enemies with this as well uh using as a one-handed weapon it's got nine uh let's see <laughs> using as a it's got an accuracy of 92 and stack amount of 5 as with all the javelins. Now we're moving on to shield. The best shield in the game has to be the steel round shield. This is actually not a common shield. It is very very hard to get. I've only been able to found, find it in two of my playthroughs. I'll put up the uh, locations where I found them. But basically one was in Balgard and one was in... Uh, I do not know it was a Valendian territory. I will put up a map uh, Basically, it's got 520 hit points and 82 speed and it's a tier 6 But if you are not able to find this no worries uh, the best alternative is going to be the Norse round shield you can fight off uh, uh, Sturgeon troops uh, big armies of Sturgeon troops in order to get this and uh, the other alternative is going to be a fortified kite shield which you can buy uh, in most of the territories of the map I do not think I will even need to put a uh, map for this because it is fairly common to find it. Uh, it's got 530 hit points. It's better than the other one, but actually uh, kind of uh, heavy. Uh, and it's a weapon tier 5. So now, moving on to the armor. The best armor in the game has to be the Imperial Guarded Lord Helmet. But this one is actually going to cost you an arm and a leg to get. It actually cost me 1.2 million to get it. You can find it in most of the Imperial territories, Northern Empire, Western Empire, Southern Empire. Almost all of them will have it. But it's going to be very, very expensive. If you are early game and cannot afford 1.2 million, which I am very, very late game and still I only got 3.79 million. It will still be a uh, trouble for me to get the other alternative that I'm going to show you is going to be the Imperial Jeweled Helmet. 
It's got only 50 head armor as opposed to the 58 of the other one. It's also weapon tier 6. It is actually 0.1 uh, gram, kilograms heavier than the other one but this one is only going to cost you 700,000 it's still expensive but that's what you pay for not to get good head armor plus this one actually looks better than the other one which is the imperial guarded lord helmet now talking about the capes the best capes in the game the best cape in the game is going to be the imperial lamla soldiers uh soldiers uh, this is actually my favorite cape in the game. There is a very similar one, Highland Warlord Pauldrons. I do not currently have that. I'll put a, a screenshot on the list, uh, on the screen uh, right now. Uh, it's actually very, very similar. The stats are exactly carbon copy of each other, but Imperial Lamla soldiers are going to be uh, easily accessible in most parts of the Imperial ter territory, whereas the Highland things are only available in uh, some of the Sturgeon territories and the Batanian territories. Now moving on to the main chest armor is going to be the best one is going to be the Imperial Lamala. It is not you will not be able to buy it on any of the markets so the same as the sword a one-handed sword goes here you'll have to marry an Imperial noblewoman uh, I married Eva, the Queen's daughter, as I before said, and she already had this pre-equipped, so I was able to take it from her. It's got very, very good stats as opposed to most of the other armors in the game. Uh, it's base, uh, as so as 56. I do not know why, but... Alright, anyway, weight is 22.1, armor tier 6, and body armor provided is 44, leg armor provided is 16, and arm armor provided is 14. It is pretty balanced all around the board, so um, I would suggest marrying an imperial woman and taking the armor from her. Uh, do make sure to give her a good armor. You don't want your wife to die in the battlefield. Uh, that would be quite troublesome. Alright, anyway. The, for the gauntlets, the best gauntlets are going to have to be the Lamla Plate Gauntlets. The Lamla Plate Gauntlets are actually very similar. Your wife is going to have them equipped, but you can also buy these on the market. They are not that expensive. These pairs pair cost me around uh, 90,000, I think, 90 or 80,000, somewhere around that. They are not that expensive. You can find it in almost all of the Imperial territories. So I'll not bother putting up a map on the screen because all the Imperial territories are going to have this. Uh, it provides 32 arm armor. It's very good. It's a weapon armor tier 6. And moving on to the leg armor, the boots, the best boots are going to be the Lamela Plate boots same as uh, in the same set as the whole body armor except for the head the lamella plate boots also are the similar cases as the gauntlets you can buy them in the markets uh in almost all of the imperial territories they also provide 32 leg armor they are also armor tier 6 they are fairly easy to get early on in the game uh the hardest one to get is the pole arm <laughs> Uh, which is going to be fairly expensive and helmets which are going to cost you an arm and a leg so i'm not going to talk about the horse because um, this is armor guide but if you ask me and there are like a uh, personal preference uh, for horses but the best horse in my opinion is the sturgeon hunter uh, and the valindian cruiser just follows right behind it all right anyway the imperial scale barding is the best horse armor in the game uh same as the body armor you'll be able to take it from your wife once you marry an imperial noblewoman uh, this is by far the best horse armor in the game it provides 75 horse armor which is actually frankly quite a lot I do not know if you would need this much. Uh, you might have seen Imperial Cataphracts and Lords have this on their horses. The best alternative is going to be uh, Chain Armor, which is going to be around 68 or something like that. But this is by far the best one on the board. So that's all the armors and weapons covered. So let me know down in the comment if you need any more guys. I'll be happy to help as always guys. If you liked it, please do consider leaving a like. And if you want to see more of this content, please do consider subscribing. As always, thank you for watching. Have a great day and now goodbye.